Hey guys, it's Brandon here coming at you with this game that just came out on Steam called Shrinking Pains. Um, one of the fun things is that this guy made this game in 48 hours for one of those challenges. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of some of these competitions where they have like 24 hours or 48 hours to make a whole game from start to finish. Um, and they can't use any help. Um, some some categories have them as they are in teams, but for this one, it's just a single guy made this game, and he was probably given the topic right when the challenge started. So this came out, it had good reviews, and I kind of wanted to give it a try. Just fair warning, though, it is containing some content that may or may not disturb you. It's kind of go along some disorders of. Um, anorexia, or anorexia, yeah, anorexia, or talking disorders, um, social disorders. So this isn't going to be more child friendly, but this is going to have some content on here which may or may not, you know, upset you or make you feel. So let's go ahead and start. So also kind of do check your your partner preference. You can choose whichever thing you want. So. It's a fan. I got my own fan. Did your ceiling always look like that? Light slants in from the bedroom window, falling in stripes across the sheets. You can feel Isabel waking next to you. She yawns, stretching her limbs to fit the corners of the bed. Her skin presses against yours, sweet in its accent, before she lays a kiss on your shoulder. Good morning, love. You hear her feet pat across the floor as she leaves the room. You lie in bed for another hour, checking your phone. After all, you don't have anywhere to be until tonight. There's a few messages from you two, your best friend, and a handful of notifications from various social media. None of it holds your attention long. No new messages. Eventually, you pull yourself out of bed. It's harder than you remember it being. You join Isabella in the kitchen. She's at the counter making coffee, already dressed for work. There she is. Hi. How you feeling? I'm okay. You sure? You're looking great. Nah, I'm fine. She looks worried, her delicate features tight in their concern. She avoids your eyes. As, sure, as long as you're sure. Would you like a coffee? Isabel asks and then immediately starts to make you one, leaving you little choice. You've learned not to say no. It only makes her suspicious. You don't want her to worry. She chatters to fill the silence as she pulls a mug from the shelf, boils the kettle, stirs in too much sugar when she thinks you're not looking. When it's ready, Isabel... Isabella places it firmly on the counter in front of you. You wrap your hands around the cup to appease her. It's her favorite. The one with the obscure pop culture reference you never understand no matter how many times she explains it. I'm looking forward to tonight. Did you remember to make the booking? Of course. Blue Ginger, your favorite. Our favorite. She laughs when she corrects you. You like her laugh. You haven't heard it in a while. What time should I get there? 7.30. There's something br brittle on Isabella's smile as she packs her lunch. She kisses you before she leaves, slow and steady. Happy two years, my love. The house feels lonely without her. You look at your coffee. You want to drink it, but part of you cowers at the smell, the warmth, the idea of it being inside you. Dot, dot, dot. When you sure Isabella won't come back, you pour it down the sink. It's nice to be here with you. Thank you for organizing organizing this. I don't think that's how you spell organizing. <laughs> the waiter is nondescript when they sit, sittle up to your table. You haven't eaten today. You'd like it to keep it that way. You sat in the kitchen for hours, watching the day tick as tick by as anxiety gripped you tight, press itself into your nerves and synapses. You have to do this for her. You have to try. The menu makes your hands shake, so you hide them beneath the table. Grip the skin of your legs as you as your stomach clenches. You're doing this for her. 
Isabella orders, obviously, to your tur turmoil, you're good at hiding in plain sight. The waiter asks for your order. Uh, let's go with vegetables. She got a bird. She smiles, pleased. You don't deserve her. You make small talk while you wait. She tells you about work. You update her on YouTube. There is an easy intimacy to your exchange with changes the mood. Food arrives. The conversation stutters, strains. You can't keep up. You can't stop thinking about the food in front of you. You push it around the plate, attempt to make it appear smaller. You know you're not fooling her, but you try anyway. You stare at Isabella's plate. The quail carcass ripped apart, blood and butter coagulating beneath its bones. For a long moment, you wish you could be that open. She saws a piece of breast indelicately and brings it to her mouth. Meat and lips, red with sauce and lipstick. You wish you were her. You could lift fork to teeth and swallow down parts of an animal, parts of anything. Feel it heavy in your belly, the weight of something inside you. It makes you sick. You can't stop thinking about food, or the lack of food, or the promise of food, the smell, the feel of the fat in, of your thighs pressing together when you sit down, the fold where your stomach meets your legs. You'd be perfectly marbled, white and red, under her knife. That's it. I don't know what's going on. When you meet her eyes, you're surprised to see she's crying. I can't do this. She stands up from the table, grabs her bag, exits the restaurant without looking back. I'm surprised at what happened. You're not surprised when she leaves you that night. Ah, Let's reminisce on the times that we've all been left. Did your ceiling always look like that? Hey! None of us have heard from you for a while. You okay? I'm fine. Ha 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 ha. Nice try. I'm going to come over, okay? Alright, I'm off today. Sweet, I'll be there at 7. Okay, gotta work. See you soon. You wake to the sound of the front door closing. Did you fall asleep again? It can't possibly be 7 already. You can hear Yudo yelling from the kitchen. Are you seriously still sleeping? I'm unpacking the groceries. Your vision swims as you get out of bed. You put your hand to the wall. Wait for it to clear. You wonder if it's meant to take this long. Hi, uh, you do. You do stands at the counter, half empty grocery bags laid out in front of him. You can see the shiny red of Kappa's nestled next to prepackaged sandwiches. From another, the smell of roast chicken wafts towards you, enticing and disgusting. Hey, sleepyhead. How you feeling? Actually, don't answer that. I know you're feeling like shit. Sorry to hear about, hear about Isabella. I know you really loved her. You don't have anything to say, so you remain quiet. It reminds you of being in the kitchen with her, voice chattering as she rummaged through cupboards, her warmth in every corner of the room. You want to feel something, but you're empty. Lately, you're always empty. I know that you that you stop eating when you're stressed, so I brought the basics. You do continues, unperturbed by your silence. Fruit, veg, chicken. A little something from every food group to keep you going. Oh man, the chicken smells amazing. Do you want some now? No thanks, I ate early. Uh, okay. I'm going to help myself. Is that okay? You nod. It would be rude to say no. You do busies, busies himself ripping open the plastic packaging before reaching into the bag with his hands. He tells you about his day as he pulls off the, the herb skin, setting it on a plate. Updates you on your mutual friend. Friends as he twists off a drumstick, a thigh, the muscle white and pink, greasy against his fingertips. Dude, use a knife when you're cutting it. Your stomach lurches. You're not sure if it's in hunger or fear. Maybe both. All you know is that you want to be sick. Hey. Hey! Dot, dot, dot. Yudo looks unsettled. Half a thigh is gone. There's a spot of fat on his shirt. I'm worried about you. 
He says it softly, like he's half hoping you won't hear it. You reassure him that you're fine. He looks unconvinced, but changes the subject. It's been a while since everyone's seen you. What are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. Great, it's my birthday. You should come. Where is it? At Blue Ginger, your favorite. Oh, God. Dude, that's where she left. It's like the air had been sucked out of your lungs. Panic. You watching them eat. Them watching you eat. Watching them watching you watching your plate. You can't, 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 you can't. And let's just keep going. You can pause here and read that. And that. Um, I don't think that will work. What? Why? I can't. Uh, sorry. Yuta's mouth twists, his hands twist. He scrapes his leftovers into the bin and leaves. You don't remember the last time your fridge was this full. You learned your lesson the last time you binged. Rice thins coated in expired condiments. You'd been sick for days. Is this really worth it? Did your ceiling always look like that? Uh, put the phone away. You spent long moments staring at the ceiling. Everything aches from your stomach to your mouth to your bones. The sheets feel like lead pressing down against you, suffocating. You can't stay here. Go away. And there's just static on the TV. You only remember how you got here in stolen moments. Her glare across the bar, the way she stole stole half empty wine glasses out of people people's hands. Vivian, she said her name was, voice husky and dangerous. She grabbed your arm and held you close, like a lamb to the slaughter led you to the taxi. Is what's in your head been so riveting riveting? Vivian swims in the view. She easily, she's easily the most beautiful person you've ever seen in real life, but in a cold, perfected way. She has the face of the devil and mouth of the color of wine. Her every gesture polished, every smile cruel, sharp angles, and bad intentions. You look like a bird. Vivian lights a cigarette with practiced ease. Breathes in deep, lets the smoke marinate in her lungs before she exhales. She carelessly flicks the ashes onto the sheets. They graze your calf, and while you flinch, she laughs, low and mocking. She stubs out the cigarette on the bed next to you, close enough to feel the burn. Put the kids away. Will you sing for me, little bird? Vivian purrs in your ears as she as she fits in your hair, pulling your head back. You feel scared but excited as she bears your throat, your body, an altar for her to feast from. Her fingernails are black and sharp into points. They leave long red marks down your back, your front, the cellulite scarred skin of your thighs. You gasp, part pain, part pleasure. You deserve this. Let her take from you until there's nothing left. She strokes the dips between your ribs, Kisses the indents under each and every vertebrae. You want to be completely empty, whitewashed. When she hurts you, nothing. When she tastes you, nothing. There is just the unfamiliar ceiling and the offering of your body. You have, you'll have bruises for weeks. Vivian is smoking again. You don't have, a, a, you don't have to strength to roll over. Little bird, I'm going to order room service. What would you like? Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. I have to go. What's the rush, little one? I'm sorry. I need to leave. You're still drunk and aching, but you pull yourself out of bed. You're not sure whose clothes you grab, yours or hers, but in record time, you're dressed. The thought of food scares you more than her hidden kind of violence. You're in front of the fridge. Why are you in front of the fridge? You can feel blood slide down your inner thigh. You're filthy.
water, it will weigh you down, slosh in your belly. But you're drunk and you're allowed this. Surely? Surely? Did your ceiling always look like that? You check your phone. You're tired. You're always tired. Sleeping is less painful than being awake. You dream of food. You wonder how much longer this can last. Time stretches. Time lags. You're not sure how you got here. You don't remember getting into the car, pulling out of the driveway, navigating the traffic lights near your home. You look down, look up. Your vision swims. Your hands shake and slacken, unable to grip worn out leather. Your chest heaves, but each breath is shallow, agonizing. Muscles weak, lungs weak. You're so weak. It's not the first time you've passed out at the wheel. You don't want to be here. The fridge is so cold. Your skin crawls. You want to be nothing but skin, bones, and bare essentials. Eat nothing. Did your ceiling always look like that? You check your phone, no messages. You open messenger consider sending one. Whenever you type a word, it looks fuzzy. Letters unclear. You give up. Hands fall against the covers. Phone spills to the floor. Did your ceiling always look like that? You spend a day seeing how many coins you can fit into the hollows above your collarbones. Did your ceiling always look like that? Getting fuzzy. You wonder how much smaller you can get. Did your... And, uh... That is the end of that session. I know there's multiple endings. So, if you want to give this a shot, um, try it out. Go ahead. This does cover some topics, um, eating disorders, social disorders, the loss of a loved one, um, self, self-destruction, so it's, it's not a topic that a lot of people like to talk about, but just make sure that you guys always have someone. If you can, just try and reach out to anyone and they are a decent human being they will let you reach out and talk to you and always be there so with that note go and hit that like and subscribe button and catch you guys next time tell me pretty lies look me in the face tell me that you love me even if it's